KFI, Mr. Mo Kelly, live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. We have a great show for you tonight. I mean, they're all great, but we have a great, great show for you tonight. Remember last night I was telling you about this movie called On the Line with Mel Gibson. It came out in 2022. Originally, when I was talking about it, I didn't know that Stefan had seen it. And then after the show, realized he did. So we were comparing notes. I told Tawala and Mark to go see it. They both saw it last night. There's going to be a very spirited debate before the show is over as to whether it's a good movie or a very bad movie. And I'm not going to tell you who is on which side, but you can probably figure it out. We're going to talk about Mel Gibson on the line. It's available on Netflix and it details a shock jock radio host who ostensibly is trying to protect his own family who has been taken hostage by some caller. You said too much. You said no, too well, much. that's in the trailer that we played last night. Okay, I'm just saying, yeah. we can't spoil anything. No, we're not going to spoil it. I'm saying that's the premise. But as radio professionals, we're going to look at it and listen to it differently than most people. So we're going to give our two cents about that. Uh, we're going to be giving away a lot of tickets tonight. Yes, we have another two pairs of Australian Pink Floyd tickets to give away. And we have a family four-pack to the Leonardo da Vinci um, ex special exhibition at the California Science Center that we're giving away tonight as well. As far as business around Los Angeles, there was, well, it's being described as a metro stabbing, but is it a metro stabbing? Or is it a metro stabbing getaway? We'll talk about that next segment. And you know my views about the recreational use of marijuana. This is just not my thing. If it's your thing, that's fine. I'm just saying I it's not my thing, or at least not yet. There's a new study which says that daily smoking, smoking of marijuana increases the risk of head and neck cancers. Duh. But we'll talk about that. And there's this news came down the pike that there might be a debate, a presidential debate or two or three. It depends on whom you ask. It depends on where you're talking about, which network and what day there was supposed to be an ABC debate for September 10th that Vice President Harris had agreed to the original stipulations. Then former President Trump said, no, I'm not doing that. I agreed to a different debate on Fox News. And said, everyone was saying, like, there's a Fox News debate. Well, anyhow, former President Trump had agreed to that. Now, today, former President Trump, he reversed course. He's saying, I'm not doing one. I'm doing three debates. With all of that being said, I think it's very important to have debates. And we've agreed with Fox on a date of September 4th. We've agreed with NBC, fairly full agreement, subject to them, on September 10th. Um, it's actually ABC on September 10th. I hope he doesn't show up to NBC on September 10th. That might be a little awkward. On September 10th. And we've agreed with ABC on September 25th. So we have those three dates and uh, those networks. Uh, they're very anxiously awaiting that date. And those dates, uh, so we have September, September 4th, September 10th, and September 25th. Uh, we have spoken to the heads of the network, and it's all been confirmed, uh, other than uh, some fairly minor details. Audience, uh, some location, which, which city would we put it into, but all things that will be settled very easily, very, I think it will be very easy. Uh, the other side has to agree to the terms. They may or may not agree. I don't know if they're going to agree. They, she hasn't done an interview. She can't do an interview. She's barely competent, and she can't do an interview. But I look forward to the debates because I think we have to set the record straight. Let's be clear. It is not unusual to have two or more presidential debates. If former President Trump is accurate, having three would be nice. But it ain't going to happen. We're not going to have three presidential debates. This is posturing. This is about saying publicly, I've agreed to this debate, this debate, that debate, and another debate when there's been no public acknowledgement of them even existing. I don't know about you, but I haven't heard anything about an NBC debate. Now, there probably has been a request which has been sent out with some general terms, but you can't agree to a, a debate 
that hasn't even been publicized. It's just it's just an um, invitation and an offer, and it can't be scheduled until both sides agree not only to the debate but the particulars. And we haven't heard the particulars. We don't know. And you heard former President Trump. He was kind of alluding to some of the parameters. But until they are made public, it's not real. And debates now, honestly, I wish we could go back to the 1980s when the debates actually meant something. And it was a competition of ideas. And there was actually a spirit of policy discussion. We don't have that anymore. Now it's just an insult fest. Now it's an unserious exercise in cheerleading for one side or the other. And no matter what happens on that stage, the most ardent supporters of President Trump are going to allege he won a debate. He could fall on his face and go to sleep. They will allege that he won a debate. And conversely, quite sure if Kamala Harris gets on the stage, no matter what she says, her supporters are going to say that she won the debate. So the real question is, does it matter? Well, it mattered in the case of Joe Biden. It exposed him and led to the end of his candidacy. But is it going to sway voters? I don't think so. I really don't think that it's going to make a measurable difference in this case. I would like to see meaningful, substantive, policy-driven debates But we're an unserious nation and we're more entertained by the idea of insults and platitudes and some sort of histrionics, which play well on YouTube and also 30 second clips on cable news. We're not trying to have an actual discussion about who would be the better person to lead the country and also be leader of the free world. Saying all that to say this. There may be three debates on the table because I'm quite sure each network would like to host a debate. That's, I think, the better way to say it. Yeah, I'm sure all the networks would like to host a debate. The odds that we'll get three, no way in hell. We'll be lucky if we get one. We got a Metro update when we come back. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. I'm going to have to slow down because it's going to sound confusing if you're not paying very close attention to what's been happening on the Metro. I get it. The stories start to run together. When I say there's another stabbing on the Metro, you think, are you talking about the one that happened here or there yesterday, today? Yes. Yes. But I'll give you some details. Yesterday, we told you about a stabbing, an assault of some sort in Pasadena at 5.45 a.m. And I was mocking the response from Metro because it seemed like they offered a a get well card, not really giving any, any information about what happened and why it happened. Through further investigation, we know now what transpired In that attack at the Allen Metro Station, which is near Pasadena City College, a man suddenly went up to a woman and punched her in the face multiple times. Do you remember how I say I can't in good conscience say that I would put my wife or my mother on Metro? This is a perfect example of why. This unprovoked attack, and you may notice this is not like gang activity where gang members are getting into fights with other gang members. These are just regular citizens, you like you and me, most often seemingly women who are minding their own business, who are being victimized. And this assailant continued to punch the woman until she fell to the ground, where he then grabbed her. And began to strike her head against the platform several times. And this is according to the preliminary report from the L.A. County MTA. And this was obtained by the L.A. Times. This was not reported by Metro. And there's no need to wonder why they would not report this information. It is really, really unfavorable. But wait, there's more. The man pushed the woman 
onto the tracks and dragged her across the concrete freeway divider and onto the 210 freeway. We didn't know this yesterday. And clearly Metro did not want this information to come out, at least not originally. But now that information is out. I didn't have that information yesterday. You didn't have that information yesterday. We just knew that there was another attack and little else. And the woman was in the hospital. We didn't know the extent of her injuries. We didn't necessarily know how she obtained the injuries. We just knew that she was attacked. And Metro released a statement saying, get well soon. Something to that effect. The woman, thank goodness, was able to escape despite all that. And when I said that she was in stable condition yesterday, I said, what does that mean? How, how did it, what extent are her injuries? Now we know the extent of her injuries, injuries, and now she is in stable condition. That could have been your sister. That could have been your daughter. That could have been your girlfriend. That could have been your wife. Unprovoked attack. That was yesterday we talked about, but we didn't have all the information. That's separate and distinct from what happened today. And this incident was first reported as a stabbing on the platform at the station at Exposition Boulevard in Vermont just after 12.15 p.m. today. That's how it was first reported. Now, more information has come out on that. I know it's confusing trying to keep all these stabbings and assaults separate. I get it. But that's why I'm taking my time so we all can understand how two different people were viciously assaulted in such a short amount of time. It was originally reported as a stabbing on the platform, but that's not how, and I always want to be accurate, that's not how um, it actually happened given further investigation. That stabbing, which was initially reported as having occurred on public transit, the stabbing actually happened on Skid Row. With the victim using public transit to escape and alerting officers to the attack once they reached an exposition park metro station. So originally there was a report on KTLA that the stabbing occurred on a platform, a metro platform at exposition, when the truth is it happened on Skid Row and then the person tried to escape on public transportation. So I'm not going to blame Metro for things that happen having nothing to do with Metro. I want to be very clear. The attack yesterday, absolutely. And we know now it is much worse than it originally was reported. We have more information, credit to the LA Times to get uh, more information out of that uh, attack and, and a report on injuries. And the attack today, which was first reported as a stabbing on the platform was not a stabbing there, but a person who was stabbed on Skid Row and then used public transportation to escape. I don't know if that's good news or bad news for Metro, but it does highlight once again, you are, if not in immediate danger using Metro, you might be danger adjacent. You might be right next to it. And this is something that, and I was talking about this with Tim Conway Jr. in our crosstalk before I came on air tonight. I may be flippant with it. I may be uh, comical with some of my delivery, but I hope you know my underlying tone is very serious. I can joke about how I can come in on almost every single day someone is getting stabbed, someone is getting hurt. But I don't want anyone to think for a second that there's anything funny about the underlying issue of violence on public transportation. Because more times than not, I would say most people who are taking public transportation, they're taking it because they don't have a choice. And if they don't have a choice, they are taking it knowing that there is a higher likelihood than should be that they might be beaten, stabbed, or killed unprovoked. We're not talking about someone who's trying to rob people. We're not talking about gang violence and you have innocent bystanders caught in the crossfire or unfortunately wrong place, wrong time. We're talking about your mom, your sister, your aunt, your daughter, 
your wife just going about her or their business on any given day and some fool comes up and tries to kill her or them. That's where we are with L.A. Metro. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. If I said to you, first, Stefan, good evening. I didn't get a chance to say hello and good evening to you. Hello and good evening to you, sir. If I said to you, Stefan, hey, I came across this study which says smoking cigarettes increases the likelihood of head, neck, and throat cancers. You, you'd probably say, duh, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Because it's a carcinogen. Exactly. Yeah, you're you're breathing in things which is not meant to be breathed in. Okay? And if I said to you, hey, Stefan, there's a study which says alcohol increases the likelihood of throat and stomach cancers and all those things, you'd probably say, duh. Why? Because it, too, is a carcinogen. Right? Okay. Yeah. There is now a study which says daily marijuana use is linked to the increased risk of deadly head and neck cancers. Duh. (laughs) You know, tell me something we don't know. Quote, our research shows that people who use cannabis, particularly those with a cannabis use disorder, and we'll get to that, are significantly more likely to develop head and neck cancers compared to those who do not use cannabis. Yeah, of course. And they said, with cannabis use disorder. Why do they call it cannab- cannabis use disorder? It sounds like the definition of addiction to me. Here's why. Cannabis use disorder is uh, defined as a person who has two or more of such symptoms, such as craving weed, sounds like addiction, becoming tolerant to its effects, using more than intended, using marijuana even though it causes problems in life, using it in high-risk situations, experiencing withdrawal and being unable to quit sounds like the definition of addiction to me and i bring that up because we often hear that you can't get addicted to cannabis well that sounds like addiction i don't don't know why you want to call it something else but it sounds like that my my point is of course it probably leads to cancer because the body's not designed to inhale non-oxygen non-natural breathing gases of course but we're not really talking about it in the same sense of that we do that the other things that are carcinogens like alcohol, like cigarettes. And here's something else. And, and it does make the distinction between smoking cannabis and edibles, or at least acknowledges that it doesn't. And this is um, Dr. Niels Cocote, a professor of clinical otolaryngitis. Uh, why, why do you give me these words I can't pronounce? Is it otolaryngo- otolaryngology? I think so. Is that it? Uh, it's in the are, are you are you just sounding it out? <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, no, I otolaryngology. Think- okay. Yeah, we're in the ballpark. Yeah. Um, head and neck surgery at the Keck School of Medicine at USC, and they say, "quote While our study did not differentiate between methods of cannabis consumption, cannabis is most commonly consumed by smoking." The association we found likely pertains mainly to smoked cannabis. Close quote. Don't be surprised. This is just me talking. Don't be surprised if, let's say, a year or two from now, we get another study that says vaping probably leads to cancer. Why? Because you're inhaling another carcinogen. And I'm not a doctor. I'm just saying there's probably a connection between breathing stuff or ingesting stuff that you're not supposed to and it leading to a higher incidence rate of cancer. Wait, you mean besides the fact that it turns your lungs into black, black tar rocks? Yeah. Rots you from the inside. Cancer on top of that? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, wait. But, but it's natural. It's from the earth. Yeah, there are a lot of things that are natural from the earth that can kill you. What about all of the the pot shops then? Do they need to, next to their plus sign, do they have to now include this warning? Well, the argument can be made for that because we know in the nicotine tobacco industry, they were forced to do that. It could possibly lead to other forms of regulation where you if you sell it, you have to put this type of label on it. 
if you advertise it, you may can only advertise it during certain times of day, like they do with alcohol. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, there are, and I don't think you can, there are limits as far as what you could even put in an alcohol ad. Hey, Mark, tell me if I'm wrong, and you may know this. Isn't it true that you can't actually drink alcohol in an in a television ad? Do I have that right? I don't know that. I don't know if I appreciate the stereotype like this either. No, 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 no. no. no I'm saying just you as so. a knowledgeable person. No, I, I don't know the answer to that. I never thought about that. You, you see them hold it all the time. They're holding it. They're 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 doing cheers. Yeah, you see them pouring it, but you don't see them drinking it. I never. Th I, now I'm going to pay attention to that. I'm going to have to look it up. I, and I'm not saying I'm right. I want to believe I might have seen something like that. The point is, I think you're going to see more studies like this, and it's going to lead to similar types of regulation in this legalized cannabis industry. Even though it's not legal on in, in a federal sense, and I think we will get there if you're paying attention in the way that alcohol has certain limitations, in the way that cigarettes definitely have certain limitations, you may see this for cannabis. And I saw the studies like, yeah, of course. I mean, inhaling any type of carcinogen increases your likelihood of of developing cancer it's, uh, that's i don't i don't know why we had to i don't know it just it just seemed like duh it sounds like you're saying now's the time to invest in edibles well i'm actually surprised that there well you probably will see a an expansion of the edibles market and it's huge as it is but you know this i'm quite sure the edibles market is saying like yes Thank you very much. But from what I understand, the processing and creation of the edibles obviously takes far more time and also is far more expensive, I would think, than growing it and then just selling it. The, 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 the time and cost from um, growth to the consumer is probably far less with, the, with uh, plants and smoking as opposed to edibles. Well, sure. Mother Nature doesn't grow a gummy for you, no. She doesn't? No. <laughs> to, to many people's dismay. It's weird because on my Facebook feed, I don't know why, but I get those ads all the time. And it's not something I'm looking for. It's not something that I'm asking for. It's not something that I'm clicking on ads for. But it's like it's, I don't, somewhere in the algorithm, it, it picked me out. And I can't figure out why. Oh, it's not just you. They're ubiquitous, especially the Tommy Chong stuff. It's all Oh, you over, saw that one too? It's okay. all over Twitter constantly. Okay. Now it's going to show up on my phone. Um, but looking it up, <laughs> it says that technically... Alcohol companies, beer and spirits are allowed to show people drinking in ads, but the alcohol companies have a very strict self-regulation policy that they all agree to, to not show people actually consuming the product in commercials. Okay, so it may not be a restriction, but it's not my imagination. It's not your imagination. It is a rule that they that they agree upon because they don't want people who are unable to drink to get the idea that they should. Huh? So they're so they so they say, "Hey, we want to sell the product." And people, according to the, their self imposed rules, uh, people who drink alcohol will associate it with the good times that they have. But because children watch TV at times when alcohol ads may run, they don't want to show the consumption of the alcohol. That makes no damn sense. Like you're advertising this beer, wine, spirit, and you want me to buy it, which means buy it and consume it. But you don't want me to see people drinking it in the desire to market and commercialize this where I would buy it and then consume it. It's yeah. almost like you're selling hamburgers, but we can't show you eating the hamburgers, okay? <laughs> I mean, I, it just doesn't, it doesn't make logical sense. That's all I'm saying. You know, if, if you're going to market it and there's nothing preventing you from marketing it and selling it, I don't, I don't get the, the distinction. Like, yes, we're, we're selling it to you, but we're not going to show people of age actually consuming it. Yeah. I mean, look. I, I, I'm just letting you know what the rules are. I don't okay. say it makes sense. All right. All right. So I wasn't completely crazy on that particular point. All right. But I think you made a great point before we go to break. Yeah, this may signal a shift as far as how um, cannabis products are marketed, are labeled, are advertised. When you get more and more of these studies, because we saw it happen with the tobacco industry.
It's later with Mo Kelly. We have tickets to tell you about, not give away, but tell you about when we come back. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. And I was checking the website at the Orpheum yesterday. The show was almost sold out yesterday. If it's not sold out already, it will soon be. And I'm talking about Australian Pink Floyd performing at the Orpheum on August 14th. We've been giving away two pairs each night, and we will tonight and tomorrow to close out the week. So we got four more pairs of tickets to give out to two lucky winners. And the response that we've received has been tremendous. We love giving away cool prizes. This is just the latest. And if you have been listening this week, we've been giving them away at the same time each night. We're not trying to trick you. We're not trying to hide them from you. But we do want to reward those who listen to the show consistently. If you've been listening earlier this week and you didn't win, well, you know exactly when we're going to be giving them away next hour. So we're going to give away two pairs to Australian Pink Floyd like we have earlier in the week. And we're going to do it next hour for the show at the Orpheum on the 14th. And tonight, we're going to give away a family four-pack to the California Science Center, which is proudly presenting the special exhibition, Leonardo da Vinci, Inventor, Artist, Dreamer. Step into a world of wonder and innovation as you explore 30 ingenious inventions, including the flying bicycle, great organ, mechanical bat, and great kite, each built by contemporary Italian artisans according to da Vinci's drawings. Mechanical wonders that were once only sketches on paper now stand before you, including over a dozen full-scale models. You can marvel at the extraordinary detail of da Vinci's designs from the mechanical eagle suspended above with its 33-foot majestic wingspan to the whimsical helical air screw, each a testament to his visionary spirit and endless curiosity. You can test your engineering skills by building Da Vinci's famous self-supporting bridge, climb aboard and operate his paddle boat, and engage in other hands-on science learning activities inside the exhibition. You can even see digitally restored reproductions of his iconic artwork, including The Last Supper and Lady with an Airmine. Discover details lost forever in the masterpiece as the displays reveal how each painting would have appeared when da Vinci created them. Each work is shown alongside interactive exhibits where you can learn more about the artwork and its restoration. We're giving away a family four pack to that tonight. And I'll let you know this. It's going to be next hour. But you're going to have to use the tickets before August 18th. I'll let you know that now. So if you're going to call in for those tickets next hour, you got to use them before August 18th, a family four pack to the California Science Center. If you've never been to the California Science Center, it's down by the Coliseum. It's great. It's fantastic. It's for all ages. Highly recommend. This would be a great um, experience for a family if you've never been or if you have been and would like to go back again. We're giving away a family four-pack next hour for the California Science Center and their special exhibition, Leonardo Leonardo da Vinci, Inventor, Artist, Dreamer. That's next hour. And also the Australian Pink Floyd tickets are next hour. It's Mo Kelly. It's KFI. We're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Full bandwidth stimulation. KFI. And KOST HD2. Los Angeles. Orange County. Live. 